reminiscing with one of her students and praise God. Good times in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I like the presence of the Lord that I feel. And God is so good. Amen. I tell you what, the Spirit of the Lord is here tonight. The Spirit of the Lord is here tonight. Amen. Amen. I praise the Lord tonight. And uh, Pastor Lewis is with us tonight with his family and some of his congregation. We're glad to have them. Amen. It's an honor to have one of his assistants with us. We've never met before, but amen. An ex TB seer like myself, I think he needs to come up and testify. Because, you know, until you've testified preaching Wharton, Texas, you can't go to heaven. Praise the Lord. Peace, Tabernacle. It's an honor to be with you tonight and with your lovely pastors. It's my first time to Wharton, Texas. So the, you guys are my first experience to your city. And so far, it's been wonderful. Thank you for having us. And of course, we're from Spring of Life in Southeast Houston. And uh, it's, it's really, truly a privilege. Come to find out, uh, I went to school with one of your pastor's sisters. I feel right at home. I also went to school with uh, Sister Minnie Sawyer's husband for many years. I, Robert Sawyer was a good friend to me, and I honor and treasure him. So I just feel at home tonight. Is that all right? And I'm excited more than anything to be in a one God, tongue-talking, holy, rolling, born-again believer in the grace and power of Jesus' name. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I want to worship God with you tonight. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, brother. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. We had Pastor Fleming and, and my sister that he went to school with here last June, and uh, we had a great time with them. Amen? amen. Praise God. And I'm especially happy to see my, my beautiful niece, and I'm halfway happy to see my nephew. <laughs> he knows I love to see him. But I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. I appreciate the spirit of the Lord that was here today and the direction which he, he led us in. And, uh, you know, I believe that every service is different and you get what you put into it. Amen. Amen. I want Pastor Lewis to come tonight. He's no stranger to this pulpit. If he wants some of his church to sing, if he wants to preach, whatever he feels led of the Holy Ghost to do. Amen. We want him to do it. Everybody say, God bless you, Pastor Lewis. Oh, we can do better than that for the Lord. Clap your hands, all you people, and shout with the voice of triumph. For the Lord is good, and his mercy endures forever. Got your neighbor say, we are a little too quiet for apostolics around here. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Touch your neighbor say, wake up. The presence of the Lord is in the house. Wake up, your blessing is right where you are. It doesn't matter what you go through today. The blessing of the Lord is in the house of the righteous. And when you begin to worship him, you tap into that place where you can get your blessing. Hallelujah. It is an honor to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Not just to be in any house. I consider myself family. Amen. I'm with my brother. Amen. And I'm with my nieces and nephews and my sister-in-law. Amen. And I'm so thankful to be here. You're my family. Oh, let me say it again. You're my family. We're apostolics. We're one God. Holy Ghost. Tongue fillers. <laughs> Hallelujah. Nevertheless, good always to have my beautiful wife. She don't have to come with me all the time. So I, I'm thankful. Wait a minute, see. I know. I won't make you testify. And I do have some new folks with us. The Ramirez family, wave your hand right here. Somebody shake their hand and make them feel welcome around here. Amen. They're new with Spring of Life. She said, I, I think I like coming. That's okay. And she came. Amen. But I told her now, this 
This service, they get wild all the time, don't it? That's the way it used to be back in the day. Night service was for revival. Night service when we got healed. Night service when the, you can pull the chandeliers down. You can shout. You can dance. You can get all of your trouble out through worship. We're too quiet around here. Make some noise in the Lord. Touch your neighbors and let's get out shouting our praise on. Amen. I, I promise you, I'm going to preach. A lot of times when I come, amen, we just do ministry. But I feel like preaching tonight. I feel an expectation in the house tonight. I, I feel some folks been in an area in a season, and God has helped me. What we don't know is God is the creator of seasons. So he can create a season right in the middle of your bad season. Touch your name and say, don't worry. Whatsoever you do should prosper. As long as you stand the book. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that does he meditate day and night. And he should be like a tree that planted by the rivers of water. And he should bring it forth his fruit. And what shall he do shall prosper. Not like the ungodly, just the chaff driveth away. Guess what? The righteous are always going to prosper. It doesn't matter where you are. Sometimes I don't think you realize who we serve. Ah, I'm ready to preach. Go and grab your scriptures. Let me expose some more of God to you. Sometimes when we get in the truth, we, we have some things that we expose to, we ready for. But then there's some truth that God has to open us up. He has to help us with. I'm not talking myself outside the book. Oh, it's in the book. Grab your Bibles. Amen. Let's go to Matthew's, amen, chapter 15. Matthew's chapter 15. Sometimes we have preaching that we have the blabbing and grabbing. We don't believe in all that. We believe you got to line up. The Bible says you abide in me and I abide in you. You can ask what you will. But notice, when you abide in the Lord, he filters out all the foolishness. So that's why you have to abide in him to get what you want. So that what you want won't kill what's inside of you. Matthew chapter 15. Start at verse 25. You have it, say amen. Amen. Let's read this together. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. Read. He insulted her. Notice, she came in the right spirit, she came in worship. Worship is always the way to go, but it's not the last thing that you must do to get your blessing sometime. It is the first thing. Once you worship, it doesn't mean God won't require something else of you. Watch this. Go ahead and read. Go ahead. Father, in your name now, we have not come to hear what the preacher has to say, but what your spirit was saying to the body of Christ. I rebuke every demonic force that desire you to steal this word. I pray now that you would break up the foul ground of our heart. I pray the spirit of expectancy will rise inside of us that we might see your word clearly. I thank you now in the name of Jesus. Have your way right now. Come on, you give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Or you can do better than give the Lord a hand clap of praise. 
Hallelujah! 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 Come on, you can do a little bit better than that. Hallelujah! Clap your hands, all you people, and shout with the voice of triumph. I'm victorious, do I may be in the cave. I'm victorious, do I may be in a storm. I'm victorious, even though I cannot see it. I'm victorious, even though I cannot feel it. I'm victorious, though I do not understand it. My victory is not in my ability, but it's in my God's hands. Hallelujah. You can be seated in the presence. I want to preach creative season. Creative season. It's when the, the one that created the season creates a season for you. A created season. Amen. And I look at the scriptures and the Bible talks about it in Psalms, the first chapter. I often wonder what did it mean that the leaves of the righteous should never wither. And then God began to talk to me. He said, well, the reason why a lot of our folks don't operate like that, because we don't see nature itself operating like that. When you notice most trees during the winter time, it begins to die. Amen. And they always die. But then God says, no, I'm not talking necessarily about the trees. I'm talking about me. I'm talking about that I'll never wither in your life. Whatever you have need of, I am your provider. I am the one that made a way in the desert. They did not have any water, but yet he was water. They did not have food, but yet he was manna. They did not know what they're going to do, but yet he provided. The Lord is our provider. It doesn't matter where you sit. You have to remember he that has called you is faithful. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. A creative season. And so God has to every now and then allow you to see your circumstances. But in your circumstance, you must never forget uh, the Bible said that he uh, is in the midst of your trial. He's in the midst of your lifestyle. It doesn't matter what you encounter. Doesn't matter what you go through. Doesn't matter how bad it is. He's in the midst of it. Touch and never say you're not by yourself. You thought you were. You fell alone. You cried by yourself. You thought you were by yourself. But what you didn't know, that the whole host of the angels of the Lord surrounded you. The presence of God was right there with you. You're not by yourself. Hallelujah. I came to preach to somebody today. God will create a season in the midst of your drought. The Bible talks about a man, a man in the scripture. And John the fifth chapter, the Bible said that he was at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years waiting for the angel for a season to come. I'm not going to preach long. But I'm telling you, I feel the spirit of God. He waited there for 38 years. Can you imagine some of us been waiting on God? And God said, hey man, I'm waiting on you. Will thou be made whole? Will you be made whole? Do you believe if the season never happened, can God make you whole? Ah, now I'm getting to where you live. That means God can create a season when there's not a season. When the angel normally would come, God said, the angel ain't going to come. But he that created the angel is with you. The one that created everything can create a moment right now just for your situation. It's not too big for God to fix you right now. But I like what he did with the man. Because that's what he's going to do with some of us. He asked him, he said, so why didn't you get in the water? A lot of times we make the excuse. I was at work. I'm just tired. I'm just going through, Pastor. And then he asked him, he said, will you be made whole? Forget all excuses. Forget that your mother and your father may not treated you right. Forget that the job may have fired you. Forget that you don't have the right banking account. Forget that you don't understand what's going on. Will you be made whole? He 
don't care what your excuse is. The real question, do you believe he can do the impossible? Can he create a season right where you are? Touch your neighbor and say, a created season takes your faith. It may be crazy, but it's what God is looking for. God is looking for crazy. I don't know who you are. You're looking at your job. You're looking at your company. You're looking at your marriage. You're looking at your children. And you think, I, don't, I can't fix this. I can't work this out. You know what? That's the perfect place to be. That's right. That's right. He couldn't help himself. It was good. Or he would have pat himself on the back. See, when God puts you in situations like that, he don't want you to be able to help yourself. He don't want you to receive his glory. He wants to make a way for you. He cannot prove himself to you if you're in the way. But I like this. I like this. I like, I like the fact that some backs up what I'm saying. See, the scripture backs it up. The Bible said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor in the way of the sinners, but his delight. But I looked at the first word. It says, bless. You know what blessed means? Happy. Somebody happy, God be happy to bless them. They're not pouting. They're not complaining. They're not in aggravation. They're not walking in defeat. But they're happy. Happy people get blessings. Happy people get good counseling. Happy people stay in the path of righteousness. Happy people know how. Touch your neighbor and say, have you been happy in a while? Some people want the created blessing of God, but what they don't want to be is happy. Ah, that's why the Bible says, amen, think on these things. Think on things that are lovely. Amen, if you got a thinking problem, think on something that's lovely. Think on something that's a good report. If that be any virtue, if there's anything added to me, you know what our problem is sometimes we think ourselves out of the blessing oh yeah you think oh, I'm not worthy you're right you're not worthy enough you're right you can't fix it you might well get over that part of it amen but it doesn't mean that you can't be happy so why am I happy because I'm not dependent on myself you might well go give yourself a hand clap of praise it's alright you know what I found out I found out a long time ago, I'm limited. And as soon as I realize it, amen, God can fix me. <laughs> Why you repeat this? Because some folks think that your pedigree got you where you are. You think that your money got you where you are. You think that all the stuff that you have acquired got you where you are. It's the blessing of the Lord. He was taking care of you even when you didn't know it. He was blessing you. You can get a Lord another hand clap of prayer. I promise you, I'm going to preach this. And so I look at this scripture. And John, I look at it now. I look at this scripture in John. And I say to myself, what, what, what's wrong with this picture? That this man, he wasn't just there for a year. He wasn't there just for two years. And the Lord said, this man was faithful to us. Sometimes we have people faithfully come to the house of God and never get what they come for. They come faithful. But the question is, what are you expecting? What are you looking for? What do you want from God? Did you really come to get what you want or did you come to see somebody else get blessed? If you want your blessing, you yourself have got to make up in your mind. I will not leave this place until I get what I came here for. I don't care what you think about me. I don't care how you feel about me. I came to the house. To get what I need, and I'm not going to let you go. Right. And what I like about it, he didn't know who he was talking to, like some of us. Sometimes we don't know who we're talking to. He was talking to the king of all kings, Sister Lewis. He realized the present that he was in. He thought it was just an ordinary man walking upon him. But this is God wrapped in flesh. The one that created. I know we call him Savior, but you better remember, amen, he's the creator. So when he walked upon him, he didn't realize. That's why I asked him, will you be made whole? He said, because I'm the creator, I can make that happen. You tell me, yeah. 
And that's what some of your problem is. You, don't, you think your problem is invincible. You think your problem can't be fixed. You think because you've been there so long, it'll never turn around. It'll never be fixed. You're lying. The devil's a lie that's speaking the thought in your mind. It can be made whole. It can be made right. God can't turn it around. God can't fix it. God can't make it whole again. God can't turn it around. There they were in the desert when no season happened. The Bible says, hey man, at nighttime it got cold. So God was their heater. How would you like that? Hey man, the seasons of your life that you go through, God provides for you. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. I see some folks in your winter and you're wilting away spiritually. Oh, I'm talking to somebody in the Holy Ghost right now. You better hear me. You're in your winter. You haven't cried in a while. You haven't prayed in a while. See, when, when trees go into dormant season, it doesn't necessarily mean that the tree is dead. It's just the tree had to find a different source, a deeper source. The root system had to go a little further. Amen. And sometimes when God, amen, make it seem like it's dead, it's not dead. He's challenging your death. How much do you want of him? How much do you really love him? Come on, there is a death in God that's beyond your shadow mind. Sometimes we can be here and just be a shell. And God said, no, no, no. I don't want you to be a shell. I want you to know that I'm your substance. When you need to cry, I'm right here. When you need to go deep sea diving, I'm the partner that you want to go with you. I'm the expert at life. I'm the expert at trouble. I'm the expert of the different seasons that you go through. Right, the Bible talks about to everything there's a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, a time to die. But I'm here to tell you that God supersedes seasons. <laughs> Let me tell you the excuse that some of you use and the enemy has helped you to use it. It's not my season, brother. You probably heard them, didn't you? It's not my season. You better stop talking about season when you have the God that made the seasons. When God is ready to bless you, amen, he don't need nobody to give him permission. When God ready to bring a new season in your life, here's all he has to do is speak it. That's all he has to do is speak a word. What is it that you need? Stop holding back and say, it's not my time. Yes, it is. So, so, and I'm, I'm closing. I'm, 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 I'm not going to be much longer because some of you got to get this. Some of you are in a place right now where you're making decisions. I feel it in the spirit. You're making decisions. Okay. If you don't hear what I'm saying, you're going to have to come right back to your pastor and worry him with the fact that if you don't watch it, amen, you're going you're gonna to kill him because you don't want a God to help you with the decision. You want somebody that you can see. You want somebody you can touch. Amen. God said, I'm telling you, you're making decisions that you need to hear me right now. So what I need to hear, Pastor Lewis, that God wants to change your season where you are now. Come on. So, so the Bible said the woman now, the woman came to him, worship. Touch your neighbor and say, that's the right perspective. But she was not even wanted because it was improper, because she was not a Jew. In fact, even a Jewish woman could not walk up to a man in such a manner. Nevertheless, her being a half-breed walking up to the king of all glory. It was inappropriate, but yet God saw her. And when he saw her faith, he challenged it. Sometimes God makes you feel like you're foolish and embarrassed. Yes, you know what our problem is? The reason why we won't invite our, our family to the church because we don't think that they got the standards down. They don't need to have them down. That's the truth. Come on. You think that they're going to expose your family, amen, for the alcohol? All of us got some alcoholics in our family. All of us got some drug dealers and some crazy folks in our family. Stop trying to feel embarrassed at the fact, amen, that God 
somebody trying to do something in your life. And when he get ready to do it, he do like he did to her. He said, why should I be giving, amen, the children's uh, bread to dogs? It was an insult. But yet an insult that she accepted. Touch your neighbor and say, you need to accept God insults. You know what it do for you? It'll help your pride. It'll help you stop thinking that you owe that. You ain't nothing and we ain't nothing but glorified mud ball. And when we come to, 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 to approaching him, we must think as such. If you're going to worship, make sure you get all of it. Make sure you go to the place of humility. Some people want to worship, but they don't want to say, God, you're everything. We'll, we'll worship him, but we won't go to the place where we deny our identity. She had to die, uh, deny her identity. Why? Because that's what he wanted. She wanted her season, but worship wasn't enough. She needed to go further. What do you mean further? She needed to deny her, herself. She needed to, to accept, amen, the insult. Sometimes God make you feel, why, God, I got to tell people about a family member that's crazy. Why I got to expose myself? Because exposure sometimes make us feel like well, something is wrong with us. You're right. Something is wrong with us. And I need his help. You know what the problem is? Is that when you don't know you have a problem, amen, and you want to assume that I'm going to come to God and not acknowledge my problem. The first thing you got to do is say, God, I got a problem. God, I'm not what everybody think I am. God, I, I have my Holy Ghost sanctified look on, but I'm wrestling with some dirty, crazy stuff. We don't like to admit that, Mother. We don't like to admit that we're still on this earth. Some of us are so rapture ready, amen, we think we walk where the angels go, or every time we get ready to go to church. But my question is, and what happened Monday through Friday and Saturday? Ooh. See, listen, I'm not trying to say that you're not human. But what I am trying to say to you, if you're human, be human, but be honest. Be honest. Be honest. The woman said, you're right. I am a dog. But I like her response. But she said, even as a dog, I still deserve the right to eat the crumbs. I still deserve a right. To have the straps. Lord, if you give me nothing but straps, I'll be all right. Give me your straps. You, you know what? You know what some of us want? We want God to give us a, a, a steak all cooked up, all tenderized with the right season, with the right plate. But when God don't give you a steak, you need to settle for the straps. I'm telling you, his straps, amen, is where it is. Amen, you, you, you think you want the steak, but I'm telling you, you can't miss anything, amen, that the Lord threw away. So she said, Lord, the dogs have the right to the straps. I like what she did. I'm going to tell you what she did. She talked herself right into a blessing. You want to get a blessing from God? God, I know I'm, I done failed you over and over again. I know I messed up. I know, God, I'm not where I need. I know I come to, I come to a church that get preached to all the time, the truth of God's word. But, God, there's some things that's still not right with me. There's some things I still have not admitted. There's some stuff, that, some pride I need to get rid of. There's some arrogance that I need to throw away. I need you, Lord. The woman realized she needed him. But she wasn't going to go. Because he called her a dog. Some of you walk out of here because the pastor don't shake your hand. If the person next to you don't say nothing to you, you insulted. Shame on you. Shame on you that you can't allow somebody, amen, to be human every now and then and forget to speak or be proper or whatever. You ready? I, I'm, I'm not coming back to that church. You probably don't need to come back because you're so perfect. You never forgot to shake somebody's hand? 
I don't know who I'm talking, but I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost, cut it out. Cut the foolishness out. At the end of the day, you still made of flesh. At the end of the day, we still need God. At the end of the day, we all are in the same boat. Trying to make our way to a better place. Seek yourself out and not allow the devil to get in your spirit. Offenses will come, but blessed are they that still love me, said the Lord. They will come. <laughs> they will come. I don't know who, who I'm talking They will come. There will be stuff that you don't like. And she didn't let that happen to her. She didn't let that get in her way. She didn't let that stop her. She said, ah, I got a need. My baby needs to be delivered. Ah, my family needs to be saved. Ah, I need this hope. I need more than what I've been getting. I need a miracle. It wasn't her season. <laughs> Watch this. Now I want you to get this. When Jesus said, I can't give the, the dogs bread to you, amen, what, what, what you didn't understand, it wasn't the season for the Gentiles yet. It wasn't the season. He came, if you look at the book of Matthew, amen, Matthew even wrote to the Jewish people. That's who he was writing to. So guess what Jesus was doing? He was reaching the, 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 the Jewish people. But every now and then, somebody that wasn't supposed to just pop up, but because they popped up with the right mentality, because they said I needed something. And they, because they accepted the fact I'm nothing, God. I, you're my every, You're my substance. You're my bread. You're my life. I cannot make it the next day without you. You're everything to me. Hallelujah. When we start making him everything. I want you to hear me. When we start making him everything. Then we don't have to depend on people to be our everything. Can I help you tonight? Can I help us? Stop allowing people to give you joy that's temporarily. I go further. I love this little beautiful woman right here. Man, she my world. This is my rib. I've been. You only know how, how much I love her. But one thing we have established: my joy and peace don't come from her. It comes because of him. Some of you got your peace stuck on the wrong thing. You think you got to have a man to have peace. You think you got to have a woman to have peace. Your peace. That's the reason why your marriage is messed up. My God gives us peace. And the peace is in my house. Not because of my wife or me. But because of my God. Oh, come on, you might as well go and get a Lord a hand clap of praise. It's all right anyhow. Some of you may not like it, but it's God. I'm telling you now, it's God. Get your peace in the right area. God want to create a blessing for you. God want to create a season for you. So I look at it, I say, wow, man. At the end of it, the Lord said, I've never seen such great faith. You know why he said that? He said, I slap you around a little bit. Mm -hmm. I discourage you. And you didn't even quit. Amen. 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 Peace, Tabernacle, can we find some folks in here that God may slap you around a little bit? Yeah. He'll let a little trouble come your way just to see if you still worship him. Oh. Paul said, but these light afflictions. <laughs> I feel like preaching for these light afflictions. Work it for me and more exceedingly and a great reward. But what I'm going through is just a light moment of discomfort. But what you're facing is not real trouble. You thought it was trouble, but it was God's opportunity. You thought it was going to destroy you, but what it did, it made you closer. It gave you a better perspective of God. It allowed you to know the king of all kings is in charge of your life think it not strange concerning these elements that are come your way he wants to create a season for you it has to have turbulency in the season but you don't want God to create a new season see until trouble happens 
We don't even know what it means to seek God. So you know what God got to do? He got to flex our muscles. He got to help our muscles. Let me help you. When you get ready to go to be an athlete, a lot of people don't know this, but the discipline that it takes, amen, is very strenuous. Amen, I worked out three times, sometimes four times a day. Amen, but the workout was worth it. Because every time I got on the field, I saw myself getting stronger. But they called these things that I was doing trials. They said, hey man, you need three trials a day. You need to go through them. And I looked and I said, man, this is really what the church go through. But when you go through this, you become stronger. When you go through this, then you can call the God that created the season to fix it. But you never know what you can go through until you go through it. I'm not going to be much longer. But I'm here to tell somebody, you are at your last point. I came in for you tonight. I don't know who you are. I can't even put my finger, but I can tell you, somebody came here with their hope shattered. They didn't think God would know where they were setting. They didn't think that they would be able to get up. They didn't even want to come here tonight. I'm telling you, you gave up already. You gave up. And sometimes we put our Holy Ghost mass on and we can't, people can't even tell that that's what's going on. We shout and people can't even tell that's what's happening. We dance and we fool everybody. We put our hands up and seem like everything is all right. But I came here for somebody tonight. God told me to tell you he's the creator of the season that you're in. If you need something to be done, he's the creator. He'll turn it around. You're in the desert, but he'll cause water to spring up. You're in a dry place. And he'll cause a well of water to come. I feel that well of water. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Take your mask off. I feel this. Take your mask off. Stop pretending everything is all right. Stop pretending that you think you're going to make it. You needed this word tonight. Said the Lord. Come on. He that called it you, he that keep it you, is able. All is not lost because of one mistake. I'm talking to someone. All is not lost because of one mistake. Now let's stand all over the building quickly. Quickly. Every head bow, every eye closed. I came here on a mission. <laughs> oh God. Oh God. They don't think there's hope. They don't think that there's a way. I don't have to say it's all to call. Some of you feel the tug. You need to come. Now. Stop debating it. You felt lost. You felt like you were by yourself. If I'm talking to you now, make your way up here quickly. Stop looking around. It's you. Stop worrying about who else is it, it, it is. It's you right now. All the way up, I want you to raise your hand. I knew God was talking to you. I want you to raise your hand. When I lay my hands upon you, you've been feeling unhappy. 